If you just got your Bamboo Lab P2S or you're thinking of ordering one, you might be wondering what else you need to get started in the world of 3D printing. That's one of the most common comments that popped up on my other 3D printing videos was people wondering what else they needed to get started. And the answer is very little. You pretty much have everything you need with the printer, but I wanted to run through what you need and a couple things I recommend that might make life a little bit easier if you're new to 3D printing. This applies to pretty much most of the Bamboo Labs printers and probably most pre-assembled printers, but I'm focusing specifically on the P2S because that's the one that I have. This is mentioned in the printer setup instructions, but I just wanna emphasize it here. The other thing you need to get are the Bamboo Lab apps. I guess you don't absolutely have to. You could print offline and from an S a USB or whatever, but the simplicity of the Bamboo Verse is worth it. So if you install the Bamboo Handy app on your phone, and if you have a computer installing Bamboo Studio on there, those are gonna be the things that just make your life so much easier. You can find models, you can print models, you can reprint stuff, you can monitor the printer, do time lapses, all that fun stuff. Those are really important, they're, they're all free apps. Just make sure you have those installed when you're starting with your printer. One thing that people were a little bit surprised about though is that it does not come with filament. So the only thing you need other than the printer and everything that comes in the box is filament. So since your printer does not come with any filament, that means you need to figure out what filament you wanna use. There are all kinds of really in-depth filament guides on YouTube. So I'm not gonna go down like the chemical compositions of different things. I'm just gonna recommend what you get and that is Go to Bamboo Labs online store and get some PLA. Just get the colors you like and you'll be good to go. For most of us starting out in the world of 3D printing, PLA is the way to go. You do not have to use Bamboo's filament, but I kind of recommend that you do, especially just starting out because I found it to be really good quality. It's really affordable. Like it's the same price or cheaper than other filament that you would buy. And it's so nicely compatible, especially if you got a printer with the AMS where you load in multi-material stuff. Their filaments have RFID tags in them, so as soon as you put it in the AMS, it detects exactly what color it is, what kind of filament it is, and then it will automatically adjust all of the printer settings for that specific filament. It's not hard to add those settings in manually if you get another filament from somewhere else, but if you're just starting out and you want things to be simple, there's really no reason not to use the Bamboo Labs filament. The other thing to keep in mind when you're ordering filament directly from Bamboo is to get one with a spool. If you're just starting out, you probably don't have any spools, so it you don't wanna feel like a fool without a spool. So when you go to their website, you'll notice a lot of colors have spool or refill. Once you have several rolls of filament and you start to use them up, you'll end up with the empty spools and then you can just order refills. You can match any refill to pretty much any spool. They don't have to be like yellow and yellow, blue and blue or whatever. So if I ran out of this yellow, I can put this blue filament right on this spool. Get a few colors if your budget lets you get like four colors, especially of the AMS. You can put one filament in each slot. Don't underestimate the power of black filament. There are some people who print anything and everything only in black. But if you're someone like me who likes bright colors, you're very tempted to only get bright colors and then you realize black filament is very helpful and necessary a lot of times. So I would recommend getting a roll of black filament and then just whatever other colors you want. If you're just starting out, I would recommend sticking with PLA. Although if you have an enclosed printer like the P2S, it can handle pretty much any material. And if you're getting Bamboo's own filament that the printer knows exactly what settings to use, that means you're gonna have a much greater chance of success even with more tricky materials, even if you're just starting out. There are lots of different types of filaments like TPU, which is a little more flexible. If you're using the AMS, make sure you get the TPU for AMS, and that's specifically a type of TPU that will work in there. If you're not using the AMS, you can get any TPU that you want. And there are also other filaments like ABS or PETG, which are super strong and robust. But again, for most of us, especially just starting out, PLA is the way to go. And once you've got your filament, that's it. You are done. You don't need to buy anything else. You don't need to spend any money. It really is that simple. Just follow the setup instructions from the printer and you'll be up and running in no time. But of course, the sky is kind of the limit when it comes to 3D printing. So you could spend all of your money if you want. You don't have to do that. There are a few things that I definitely recommend you either print or get just to make your life a little bit easier. And fortunately, they're all very cheap. One of the reasons you don't need to get anything extra with your bamboo printer is that the printer comes with a few little tools. So if you do need to make any adjustments or change anything, you already have everything you need. And it also comes with the instructions, not the instructions, but the, the print files to print a little toolbox for those tools. I would strongly encourage you to print this little toolbox. This is a really fun print. 
And if you're just starting out with 3D printing, it's, it's a good chance to print a multi-part print. You can even do a multi-color option if you want. So if you have the AMS and you wanna play around with multiple colors, it's kind of a good intro into that. And it's just useful. It lets you actually keep everything organized that you might need as the printer goes on. And everything that the printer comes with, this is really all you need to get it up and running. I have not needed any of these things, except one of these screws since I got my printer. The next thing I would recommend that you do is print a poop shoot. This is kind of a necessity for a lot of Bamboo's printer because they just shoot excess filament out the back and it's just gonna end up all over the floor and making a mess so you can print some kind of little container. I've talked about this in other videos, but I like this really simple design right here and then it kind of catches all the waste, all the poops just go right in there. This is a very simple design that just hangs on a screw on the back of the printer. I actually just replaced the screw that came with the printer using one of the longer ones that was part of the packing material when I unpacked the printer. It's a little bit longer and that let me just hang this directly on there. There are all kinds of different poop shoots you can print for your printer. Some of them are huge, some of them are very elaborate. I went with simple because I just didn't want any issues to happen, so I figured simple was more reliable. The reason you need this is that every time the printer starts a print or changes a color or a material, it produces one of these little, little poops, these little bits of waste right here. So if you're just doing a single color print, that's not bad. If you're doing multicolor, it doesn't even necessarily mean there's going to be a lot. Something like this container right here is multicolor, but it's super simple because the printer printed all in black until it got to the top and then it switched to blue and then it printed in blue. So that means it basically just did, you know, a couple of these little things for this whole print. This right here, my wife asked me to print a 10-sided die, dice, die, I cannot remember, but a 10-sided thingy and it has multiple colors. It has blue and white. This produced the most amount of waste I have seen so far, this little thing right here. And that's because unlike this box that printed all one color until it switched to a second color, this has both colors mixed in throughout, so it had to print everything in layers. I think this total print was like 250, 300 layers, and so most of these, as you can kind of see, if you were to slice this, you know, vertically, most layers include a little bit of this blue. This is the silk blue PLA and then most of them include white. So that means every layer the printer had to switch from blue to white, blue to white, every, you know, 250, 300 times throughout this print. So I wanted to try that as kind of a stress test and the printer worked fine, but it filled up like one and a half of these bins just for this. If you're gonna do a lot of multicolor prints like this, where it's, it's all mixed in, you're gonna have to switch constantly or multi-material, because it's the same thing if you switch different materials then I would recommend printing a larger poop shoot, but this isn't something I do a ton of, at least not currently, so this has been more than fine and it's worked great. That's just a little explanation of poops. That's the poop scoop. The scoop on poops. So I would put the poop shoot in an essential category and then you're, you're up and running. I've never done this before, but with the bamboo printer and all the nice bamboo filament, I got some of these reseal resealable filament bags because if you leave your filament out like that, where it's just sort of hanging out and I do that for long periods of time, it can dry out, it can get brittle, it can really be negatively affected just by the environment that you're in. If you have the AMS, this is a safe place to keep your filament, but if you have filament that's not hanging out in the AMS, then a bag like these are super helpful. You could also just use like a kitchen bag or there's all kinds of filament containers. Something to contain your filament is a great way to make sure you don't spend a bunch of money on filament and then have it go to waste because the filament goes bad. I've been pretty happy with this kit because it came with this USB vacuum sucker thing that you can run off a computer or just, I just use a power bank. So you just have to make sure this is sealed up really tight and then you take this and you basically just put it on this little part right here. And then you can kind of see how it is sucking out all the air, like those old food saver things from the 90s. This kit came with a whole bunch of bags and the vacuum thing, and it wasn't crazy expensive and you can buy extra bags. I have noticed that I've had several bags fail so far where they don't keep their vacuum pack anymore. They kind of like get little holes in them and then they, they just end up sort of being not totally sealed like this. I still think it's a good idea to keep them in the bags with a little desiccant packet that's better than nothing. One thing you'll notice is that your printer does come with a razor blade and one of the default prints that you can just print directly from there that's built into the printer is a scraper holder, a blade holder like this. And that lets you, you know, do this safely. 
This is a helpful thing if something gets stuck to your build plate and you need to scrape it off. This can be used that way. What's nice about this one is if you use this little bump as kind of a guide, it should keep it at an angle that won't scratch the build plate. But anytime you're using metal on a build plate, you do run the risk of scratching it. Once your build plate has a scratch in it, prints can have a hard time staying stuck to it. For the most part, if you're using PLA like we talked about, it's super simple and you'll be able to just pop that right off the build plate, no problem. But sometimes with certain prints or certain materials, you'll find that they have a really hard time getting off the build plate and that's why you might need a scraper to kind of like pry stuff off. I really like using plastic scrapers instead. So this is something that you could print. You can find designs for plastic scrapers. You probably want to print them in a tougher material. Plastic has virtually no chance of scratching your build plate, so you don't have to worry about that, but it's still you know, strong enough and useful enough to kind of get under the printer. I actually found these, which are pretty cool. They're like, this was, I think it was, I don't know, $8 for two of these little handles and then a bunch of these plastic razor blades. And these are awesome because you can scrape and pry things off if you need to, but it's never going to scratch your build plate. This is probably something you could print because it's all made out of plastic but it was so inexpensive to just get more than I'll ever need for the rest of my life. And it was just like, I'll do that and then I'll never have to think about it again. Be very, very careful anytime you're using a metal scraper on a 3D printer build plate. So I recommend some kind of plastic scraper. There's even simple ones like this you can buy or print if you don't want this thing. And then finally, there are a couple of different tools that will make your 3D printing life easy. You might even have some of these already, but if not, again, super affordable and easy to get online or at a home improvement store or whatever. The first one being a nice pair of digital calpers. These, even if you don't think you're gonna design your own 3D prints, it's probably not going to be long before you do want to modify a print or dive into the world of designing, even if it's something simple, like just a little box to hold something in, but you want it to be the exact right size. A nice pair of calpers lets you measure things very precisely, the exterior, the interior, and then you can be sure that things are the right size. I'm terrible at 3D design, but just using a simple pair of calpers has helped me make cool things like this, like a custom container for one of my webcams where it fits in. I actually was able to just measure the package that this came in, and then I was able to recreate that flimsy package in a 3D print that now lasts a long time and it goes on a Gridfinity system and it works really well. Another thing that's really helpful is a deburring tool. This is like one of my favorite, most satisfying <laughs> things to use. These are intended so that if you have a print that's kind of rough on the edges, you can sort of take this and sort of scrape that off and smooth it out a little bit. It comes with a whole bunch of extra blades in the handle here. I've had this for nine years. I've never had to change the blade. So this is definitely one of those things, once you buy it, you're pretty much set for life unless you lose it. And finally, some of my favorite tools are these right here. I have a set in the garage and I have a set in the house with my 3D printer. One of them is a little tiny plier and the other one is a little tiny snipper, like almost a little tiny scissors. This is great for clipping filament if you need to, clipping bits off of prints. This is great for kind of like pulling off supports and stuff like that. These are really small, but super high quality. They come together in a pack and it's something I bought like on a whim many years ago and I've used them so many times since. It's like been one of those helpful things ever, even beyond 3D printing. I definitely recommend getting a little set of tiny sturdy pliers and tiny sturdy snips. From there, the world is your oyster. You can find niche accessory companies. You can build a whole workshop, but to get started, to just open up your Bamboo Lab P2S printer or most any pre-built printer, Pretty much the only thing you're gonna need to buy is filament. In the case of bamboo printers, you probably need to print a poop shoot, install the apps, then you're all set. If you want to get a couple of helpful tools to help you out, that will make life a little bit easier along the way, but that's really it. So ultimately, even though this ended up being a little bit longer than I expected, my whole point was just to help reassure you that if you've ordered the P2S, you got everything you need to get started. Just get some filament and some cool colors that you like and you'll have a ton of fun. And that is kind of, 3D printing can be a serious thing, a business related thing, a hobby thing. I have never had more fun 3D printing than I have since I got my P2S. And I, that, I want to share that because as someone who really liked 3D printing and then completely like dropped off and then rediscovered it because of a really great useful tool like this. I just kind of want to share that with you. I want to make sure you don't think that you need to have 
every bit Bob, Gizmo, and Gadget in the world to 3D print. You really just need this and some good ideas.